Okay, shalom, shalom. Kom yasha Allah. Koholoimla, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakaha Kodash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. That by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth and just want to say the water to all the Akim and Akwa. That's out here sincerely keeping the laws, the statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai to the best of their ability. Jachanan Wa is coming at you with another quick lesson. Praying that it's edifying by the Spirit. And um, the greeting that I said in the beginning, um, Koholoyim La Yahweh. That's all praises the most high. The world calls him the most high. These different um titles or whatever, but his name is Yahweh, which means that in the name Yahweh Shai. That's the true name of the Son, which the world ignorantly calls Jesus, is Yahweh Shai, which means he's the savior or deliverer in Paleo Hebrew. And um the Rakachwadash, that's the Holy Spirit in the Paleo Hebrew. You know, we, you know, we have to bring that out for new listeners, um, newcomers that are coming into this truth. And you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, hey, your biblical nationality is your Hebrew Israelites. You're not, you know, um, these names that the colonizer gave you. Because the Lord is, is, is about to Israel, which are the apple of his eye that he made a covenant with long ago with our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And um, the prophecies are coming to pass of the destruction of his enemies which are all named off you know mass majority of them are named off in um the book of psalms chapter 83 and the main top enemy of the lord is the so-called white man which his biblical name is he's an edomite his biblical name is esau edom in the greek idumians and they are the main main enemy of the lord you see but anyway let's get off into some of this um article here we're going to touch on a couple of topics in it. Um, this is Newsweek. It says Israeli official calls for doomsday nuclear missile option. Now, <laughs> let's just get some of it. It says an, an Israeli lawmaker is calling for her nation's military to use nuclear warfare in response to attacks by Hamas. Revital Tali Gottlieb, an Israeli lawyer, and member of the Neset for the Lukit, Luke Likud, Salaki, if I'm pronouncing that wrong, published multiple posts advocating for forceful retaliation following a surprise attack on Gaza in, on Saturday at the hands of the militant Palestinian group designated as a terrorist organization by the United States. And I, I find it real um, hard to believe that they got caught off guard. Who knows, though? You know, uh, we all we all know. Tell us and who's fact check. I mean, these sec <laughs> these security systems are too advanced to get caught off guard like that, especially on a day when you're having, you know, such a a big holiday. You know, generally, like that's even like the U.S. On, on, on these big holidays, say like um, New York, for instance. You know what I'm saying? New Year's. You know, Christmas. You know all those different. You know these big holidays where people are out and about. And they're just, you know, shopping and for the safety of the country, they're on high alert at all times when it comes to certain um, things like that. So, you know, just me speaking as a man, I find it hard to believe that they were caught off guard. This is more than likely. Who knows, man? You know, the scripture says never trust thy enemy. <laughs> all we can do is just kind of listen to what they say, you know, um, filter it through the scriptures and keep moving, man. But anyway. It says more than, um, okay, it gets off into how many people were killed and all that good stuff. But I want to get to the point. This, this lady is saying Jericho missile, Jericho missile, strategic alert before considering the introduction of forces, doomsday weapon. This is my opinion. May God preserve all our strength. God live row on X, formerly known as Twitter, on Monday. Now, you know what? Um, let me see if I can, um, slack you. Uh, let's see if we can we can get a picture of this lady or something like that. Let's see here. Should have put in lawmaker. Oh, this her. Yes, yeah, it's her right here. Let's see here. 
and you can look and tell she, you know, <laughs> let me keep it classy. I'm just going to, let me just chill. You could, you could look and tell. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> you know, uh, but one of the reasons I wanted to get off into this article as well is when I re was reading into it. See, women are not supposed to be in these positions. But this is and, and, and that's how you know that those people that are over there, you know, they're, they're they don't follow the laws, statutes and commandments of the Lord. But of course, they don't believe in the New Testament as well. You know, they don't even believe believe in who the world ignorantly calls Jesus. You know, but those women. No women are supposed to be in authority like that. It just is what it is. You know, let's get um. First Timothy, chapter two. In verse 11, it says, let the women, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. See, she's not supposed to usurp in, in that position as a lawyer. You, you're you usurping um, all kinds of authority over men. You see what I'm saying? You're going into the, the courtrooms, you know, on your menstrual cycles, your monthly, which is um, a, a defilement in itself. You know, and you think that those people, you know, that they're, you know, they would keep those particular kinds of laws, but they don't. You know what I'm saying? A, a, a woman is not supposed to be in those particular positions. You know, it just is what it is. Um, let me see. Uh, what is that? Let's see. Let's see. So like, yeah, let me see if this is what I want to grab here. Yeah, yeah. Um, 1 Corinthians 14 and 34. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be in obedience, as also said the law. See? And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. So, I am just want to just, you know, lay down the, the foundation or the groundwork as to the, the type of mindset that Israel had. You know, in that particular day and time and that day and, and the Lord has not changed. This is still an order from the Lord. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. This, this thing hasn't changed. But the, but the so-called white man, Esau Edom, you know, he he goes totally against what the scriptures say. Now, they have the world fooled that, you know, they're the holy people, but they're not doing anything holy. They're not keeping any of the law, statutes and commandments, you know. They, they have their, you know, um, their rituals, I, I would say that they keep, you know, their man-made rituals, so to speak. You know, some of that stuff, you know, they do as cosmetics, you know, as a front. But they're not keeping, they don't even call on the name of the Lord. They don't even call on the name of Yahweh. They don't call it, they're definitely not calling on the name of Yahweh Shai. Because like I said, they don't believe in the New Testament. But anyway, let's go back off into this. And you can clearly see, like I said again... <laughs> Ooh, we boy, she, she, she. I, I can see her waking up, and just, ooh, <laughs> ooh. But anyway, let's go off into some more of what she said. Right? It says another post says, "I urge you to do everything and use doomsday weapons fearlessly against our enemies." Adding that Israel must use everything in its arsenal. So she want their asses wiped off the map. So just think if she had that kind of power, she would be pushing buttons. It says on Tuesday, she continued with her cause of urgency. Only an explosion that shakes the Middle East will restore this country's dignity, strength and security. Godly posted. It's time to kiss doomsday. Shooting powerful missiles without limit, not flattening a neighborhood, crushing and flattening Gaza without mercy, without mercy. <laughs> hey man, hey that woman boy. Ooh we when a woman is scorned. But this is why hey, they they're not supposed to be in and they don't, you know, see she's moving in her emotions. She don't even care that, you know, that there are actually hostages over there that are her people. She's just like flatting that shit. But forget the hostages. You know, we you know they're you know just uh <laughs> you know just casualties of war. That's it. You know, collateral damage. We just, you know, we had to, we'll, 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 you know, set the families up with a couple of dollars. We'll set a fund up for them. It says she also stressed a swift response 
from from her own government in response to Hamas laughing at the country. See, Nicola Nicola Sokol, senior fellow at the Vienna Center of Disarmament and Nonproliferation, told Newsweek via email that loose talk regarding nuclear weapons has become prevalent and more commonplace in the recent years due to the war in Ukraine and now in the ex the escalation in, in Gaza. And that's an important point. That's an important part right there, right? Let's get that. Because these are prophecies that are playing out, man. And it's beautiful, too. Gotta love it, man. Have to be occupied in prophecy, man. Because because this is this is it. What else is there to do? Other than go to work and, and get your daily bread, you know, come on home, chill, and, and wait this thing out. All that mirth, all that going out, you know, I got plans to go to fit here, I got plans to go there, you know, and, and people just living, they're just, just roaming about the earth like ain't shit going on. They have no idea that the Lord is getting ready to demolish this place, man. Well, let's get on Matthew chapter 24. Matter of fact, they have this um, account in Mark 13 and the account also in um, Luke chapter 21, verses 7 through 19. Mark um, chapter 13, 3 through 13. But I'm, uh, I, you know, I always get it in Matthew for some reason. I just like, I don't know. It, it's all, you know, it kind of it's worded a little bit differently here and there as far as um, each account. But it's all the same. I'll put it that way. Okay, so this is Matthew 24 and 3. It says, As he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? So the Lord is about to give them a rundown, right? And Yahweh Shai, which the world ignorantly calls Jesus. And again, his name is Yahweh Shai. The letter J was invented in 1524, about 500 years ago. So if the Lord walked the earth 2,000 years ago, and there was no letter J. How could they have been calling him Jesus? You see, you have to look up these words. You have to look up this information. And also, there's no letter J in Hebrew, in the Hebrew, Hebrew alphabet. There's no letter E in the Hebrew alphabet. There's no letter O. There's no letter U. There's no letter V in the Hebrew alphabet. So the father's name is not Jehovah. It is Yahweh. And the son's name is not Jesus. It is Yahweh Shai. That's very important to know. Because those names are the most important thing of this truth because you have to repent and right. It's a lot. Uh, Baruch chapter 2. And uh, what is that around? Verse 30. I think it is. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let me see. Let me start at verse 29. Baruch chapter 2, verse 29 in the Apocrypha. It says, If ye will not hear my voice, surely this very great multitude shall be turned into a small number among the nations where I will scatter them. So we're scattered throughout all these nations. And, and see, we're a large nation of people. We're just scattered and broken up into pieces into all of these nations, um, you know, underneath these, these colonizers, so to speak, you know, our enemies, where it, may, it seems as if we're small, but we're a great nation of people. It's a lot of us. We outnumber every nation on this planet. It's just that, you know, you got 10 percent here. You know, I think in the Americas, they talk about, you know, um, the so-called Negroes are like 12, 13 percent. And then but if you put us. So we're everywhere. We're in every nation on the planet. Right. It says but it says for I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff necked people. But in the land of their captivities. They shall remember themselves and shall know that I am the Lord, their God, where I give them an heart and ears to hear. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name. See, and what's the name? See, and this is what's happening in these last days. We're waking up in our captivity and we're calling on the name of the Lord. Israelites are waking up everywhere, man. 
This is a big thing. This is a big prophecy that's playing out. We're calling on the name of our Lord in our captivity, and his name is Yahweh. His name is not Jehovah. His son's name is not Jesus. You know, we got to call on the right names, man. But anyway, let's go back to where we was. Because I wanted to get the importance of, you know, this prophecy where this, you know, this guy, he mentioned that they're talking about these nuclear weapons. See, it's always been talks of, um, you know, war, but they're talking about nuclear war now. You're starting to hear that like it's nothing. That's just a regular um, every it's a phrase. Yeah. Leave you. And rumors of wars. That's what you're hearing about. But not only are you hearing of wars and rumors of wars, you know, you're hearing about there's certain sticklers to those wars. You're even hearing about civil war. Because America is brewing on a civil war. But you're hearing about nuclear war as well. You see what I'm saying? And the apostle was going off into that word rumor. I think he, he was saying that it um, goes off into noise. I don't know if he was talking about any Italian. You know, because the apostle Gabar, he's into all kinds of languages. He be going into those words, man. Beautiful. Well, but anyway, let's, he says, um, and ye shall hear wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled for all these things. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. And these things are already happening. And again, what's going on over there in, um, you know, Israel right now is overshadowing that earthquake that just happened in Afghanistan the other day. Where I'm not even sure where their death toll is at. It, it could be above 3,000 by now, you know. Because I know the other day it was like um, a little above 2,000 people had got. They're still digging people out and stuff like that. So, you know, the body count is going to grow. But, you know, you got um, these earthquakes in diverse places. You had, we, man, it's been some super duper major earthquakes in these past couple of months, man, throughout this year of 2023, to be exact. But let's go back off into here. I'm going to end out here in a sec here. I'm not going to keep it long. I just wanted to, you know, when I was reading this. This is the way that a lot of these people feel, man. And this is an Edomite type of feeling, though. Esau, Edom, they get down like this, man. It says, um, part of it is understandable. This is what this guy, let me go back on what this guy is saying. Nikolai Sokov, senior fellow at the Vienna Center of Disarmament and Non-Proliferation, non told Newsweek via email that loose talk regarding nuclear weapons has become prevalent and more commonplace in recent years due to the war in Ukraine and now the escalation in Gaza. Part of it is understandable, he said, due to the serious security crisis, a lack of knowledge about nuclear weapons, visible political positions, and more people generally pondering the use of such weapons and the effect on a global scale. For Israel, such loose talk is perhaps even more damaging because the country does not even admit it has nuclear weapons. So an indirect confirm confirmation is not good for its image. Oh, they got them. You best believe if anybody got them, they got them. <laughs> and, 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 and let's just say they don't have them. America got them, and that's their main, or they, you know, uh, Israel run America. So America got them. So if anything, I mean, they have access to them. It's not like they don't have access to these weapons. Come on, man. They're already they're asking America right now for so I guess some a re up of those missiles that they shot out of the Iron Dome, you know. And and America, this place is some of the the, the biggest supporters of the of, of those people, man. And I say it all the time: you so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, your tax part of your taxpayers' money goes towards Israel, man. And and and, and their um holy cross. If you know what I'm talking about. You see, they're getting reparations off of you and you had nothing to do with um, um, what befell them. But they're taking part of your taxpayers money and they're sending it to them for reparations, which I don't even know why, because America had nothing to do with it, so to speak. But you so-called blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans that go to work hard every damn day, punch in your money and they don't want to give you reparations. <laughs> 
So think about that. You can't get a reparations out of the very country that, that done you all kinds of dirty. Still doing you all kinds of dirty. Hundreds of years later, they taking actually money from you instead of putting it into your communities. Instead of doing for you, instead of it coming towards you and your family, instead of your roles being taken care of, instead of your, you know, situation and, you know, being being um, better. They're taking money from you to send to somebody that has absolutely nothing to do with you at all. It, 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 it's mind boggling. Well, it's understandable because we do understand that we are under the curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28. Right. It says so called added that Godless cause for escalatory measures is nearsighted for two reasons. One. Well, of course, it is nearsighted for, for one reason is because she's a woman and she shouldn't be in that that position because she's going to, of course, think more emotionally than a man would. It says um, one, any potential any potential targets are in the immediate vicinity. Hence, damage to Israel could be considerable. And two, the military utility of nuclear weapons is often grossly underestimated, overestimated, Salakia, especially by those who have limited or no knowledge of nuclear weapons. There are effectively no targets for nuclear weapons in this war conflict, he said. See, she don't understand that, you know, OK, I mean, the shit is right there. The Gaza Strip, man, that shit ain't no bigger than the Vegas Strip. <laughs> You know what I'm saying, man? That, that, that shit is not that big, man. You know what I'm saying? If you if you drop a nuclear bomb, you basically will be nuclear, um, 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 nuking Israel. You see how stupid she sound? You see what I'm saying? Yeah, you, you know you, you know, thinking before you talk, man, it goes a long way. She basically that damn bomb that she's talking about would actually eradicate her ass more than likely if she's not out of the country when it lands. <laughs> Hell, the Gaza Strip, basically, it is Israel. I mean, come on, bro. Uh, anyway. It says she has been a vocal critic of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. We call him Benjamin, not a Jew. Who, along with Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Galan, previously issued a statement in defense of Israel defense forces the IDF officials and the security establishment in September in September she accused the IDF and the Shin Bet Israel security agency of working for Palestinian terrorists and security prisoners according to the Jerusalem Post after being condemned by the Israeli government for infuriating rhetoric she doubled down and justified attacks by lawmakers on domestic military personnel so again man and, and she she don't even have sense enough to keep her mouth shut on certain shit, man. I'm telling you, man. Hey, women, their place is at the house. They're not supposed to be in these particular types of positions, man. Because if she was higher up and she had actually had the ability to actually push a goddamn military, I mean, a nuclear button, oh, it would be all, if she'd have done that day one without even thinking it through. It says, Net, not a who, not a you, or not a Jew, <laughs> has waged war against Hamas and promised to reduce terrorists to rubble. That they will remember no they that they will remember for decades to come. However, he has faced renewed criticism for alleged for alleged security and intelligence failures that preceded the deadliest attack on Israeli soil in more than five decades. One day after criticizing Netanyahu, the left leaning newspaper Haaretz on Tuesday ran an op ed with the headline Netanyahu resign now. It said he is responsible for the worst failure in, in the country's history. And there you have it, man. <laughs> there you have it. But one thing I tell you they're not doing over there right now, they're not protesting. Remember all them protests they were just having? Remember all those um, 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 all those people in the streets protesting? That shit not going on no more. I bet you that. And it's not going to go on no more, I don't think. You know, because a lot of the people that, that were over there were coming up against the government. Now... You have to keep in mind that if these are the people and prophetically. Salakia. I ain't mean to even go into that. I went into another story, but we're done with that one story anyway. It says Israel goes to war. Russia must now decide where its loyalty lies in the Middle East. Of course, we, you know what Russia um, loyalty lies. It lies with um, Iran. <laughs> 
Hey, what the hell you mean? He ain't about to link up with Israel. Get the hell out of here. Anyway, what was I saying? Uh, Salakia. Though them people basically was having those protests over there, over, you know, over this guy, you know, and and basically, you know, the shit is all corrupt. All these these nations, their whole setup, their governments is all basically Israel is ran no differently than America. You got a bunch of crooked damn politicians, a bunch of crook. You know, you got this law going with this law. You got LGBTQ laws. They got I mean, it's all kinds of stuff. Now, if these people are really prophetically the holy people. And when they supposedly came back to the holy land, everything is supposed to be at peace. There's, there's not even supposed to be no more wars. When you go into the scriptures prophetically on that, man, and that's another lesson. You know, everything is supposed to be at peace. These people, as a matter of fact, all these nations, Iran should be coming to them to get wisdom, knowledge and understanding from them. They should be coming to them with gold, silver, rubies, whatever. You know what I'm saying? This is what's going to happen when the real children of Israel, which are you so-called blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans. When when we hit that land as a people. It's it, 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 all these nations are going to flood directly to us, man, and worship us. Those prophecies are not happening with them when they hit the land in 1948. It's been nothing but war after war after war after war. <laughs> Matter of fact, let me see here. Salakia. Crazy, bro. Isaiah chapter 60. Uh, let's see here. And, and it's actually entitled a glorified Zion and in a new living translation over here to the right. It says future glory for Jerusalem. Right. Let's get to the point. Um, let me see where I want to start at here. Because this is the prophecy for when, um, you know, the Israelites go back into the land you see it's like, yeah, uh, let me start at verse 10 here it says and the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls and their king shall minister unto thee for in my wrath I smote thee but in my favor have I had mercy on thee so these people are supposed to be over there building up your damn walls it says, therefore, thy gate shall be open continually. See, they shall not be shut day or night, nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles and that their kings may be brought. See, let me get this in the NLT over here. It says your gates will stay open day and night to receive the wealth of many lands. The kings of the world will be led as captives in a victory procession. Aren't there kings still out here ruling? Shouldn't the Russian president, shouldn't all these people be, um, um, you know, uh, uh, being, um, you know, brought to Israel as captives? Shouldn't they be bringing all this gold, silver and resources and all this luxury? That's not happening in Israel. That's not happening over there. That hasn't happened since they've been there for 70, the past 75 years. So who are these people? <laughs> right. It says, for the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. And that goes for every nation on the planet. All these nations are not, you know, you, you, you got these ones that's just kind of like, um, you know, playing their part, so to speak. But these nations don't like Israel. They just playing a part because they're the ones that's in power as far as um, on this carnal level of things, man. Because the scripture says that a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. That there will be they, um, that these these nations would depart and fight over there over that land. Roughly paraphrasing. That's why the Palestinians and the Israelis are over there fighting over the land that's not theirs. And it's going to always be that way until the real children of Israel come into play, man. Which are you so-called blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans, of course. It says the glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fir tree, the pine tree and the box together to beautify the place of my sanctuary and I will make the place of my feet glorious the sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee and all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet right 
and they shall call thee the city of Yahweh, the city of the Lord, the, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated so that no man went through thee, I will make thee an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. Thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles and shalt suck the breasts of the kings. And thou shalt know that I, the Lord, Yahweh, and thy Savior and the, thy Redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. Right. It says for brass will I bring gold. And for iron, I will bring silver and for wood, brass and I and for stone, iron. I will also make thy offers, officers peace and thine exactors righteousness. So the Lord is going to upgrade, man. Now, this is the point that I wanted to get right here. Check this out. Verse 18. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land. Huh? Oh, violence shall not be heard in thy land no more. What the hell is going over there right now? That should, there shouldn't be no violence over there if they were really the people and they prophetically fit the prophecies because that's what they say out of their own mouth. They're fitting the prophecies of the children of Israel, which they can't tell you where Naphtali is at. They can't tell you where Zebulon is at. They don't tell you about Asher. You don't ever even hear about none of the other tribes. Right. Well, let's get this back. Violence shall no more be heard in, the, in thy land. Wasting nor destruction within thy borders, but thou shalt call thy city salvation and thy gates praise. I can say, I'm gonna stop right there. See, so somebody's lying, man. These, you know, if they were the people, none of that stuff they could never be caught off surprise. Why? Because it says, Violence shall no more be heard in thy land. Soon as they got there, they, they, they had a war. Since they've been there, they've been um, bombing people and, 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 and been having conflicts. See, so, I mean, hey, the, the, these prophecies are coming to pass, man. The children of Israel are waking up. The so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, uh, Jamaicans, Haitians, Latinos, Dominicans, Mexicans, Brazilians, whatever you they're calling you. They're waking up and, and the people that are are the imposters are being exposed to the world for who they really are. And they're Edomites, man. This is the top tribe of Esau, Edom. Amalek, man. So I just wanted to just touch on this, man. Um, a couple of things came out in it. And this lady is out of her goddamn mind, bro. I'm telling you. Hey, this, this is the reason why a woman, she can wake up, man, and have a bad night with her husband. And she and she's on her monthly and she can come in and push a goddamn button to destroy the world. <laughs> she, uh, uh, no, you have to have wisdom, patience and um. You know, you have to you have to um, be slow to anger, man. You know, when it comes to things like this, man, you can't just. Oh, well, we should we should just this is talking about blowing herself up. Um, um, damn near. Basically, it's what she's saying, because that's how close that Gaza Strip is, man. I mean, it's all right there. What if the wind blow back your way, you know, radiation or whatever the case may be? You can't just use no nuke, man, or no area that goddamn small. The hell out of here, man. That shit is no long, man. <laughs> that shit is like maybe about 10 blocks, probably. <laughs> I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit. But, you know, that, that's how small that spot is, man. That place is not that big. You can't, if you use nuclear weapons over there, you're, de you're definitely going to catch some fallback from it, which is stupid as hell. But anyway, I just wanted to touch on that, man. I pray that the lesson was edifying. Quorum, y'all,